So what is this testing that we do in Hawaii when you're somewhere else on the planet? And how does, how does that work? What is, is we've got, we've actually right now got three different systems, three different ways to cross correlate what's happening where you are. It's, it's kind of like in cosmology where they do remote sensing. How do they know what minerals are on that star, you know, millions of light years away? maybe billions of light years away. And so remote sensing is, is it's, it's a very, uh, can be a very subtle thing. Uh, when we're dealing with biological systems, biological systems are way more sensitive uh, to the kind of biocommunication signals that we're dealing with. So some of these signals we're not able to measure uh, with, with conventional equipment. So we use the body itself, we use the mind itself. So when I'm testing you remotely, I'm using your photograph to think of you, and we call that surrogate testing, where I become an extension of you, of your body's intelligence, and tuning into that. It's like uh, the remote viewing programs that, that the government has put uh, millions and millions of dollars into, and, and those that research has shown that they were able to see a remote location. So we're doing remote viewing of your body and uh, its energy system, and using surrogate testing to use my body as the, the, uh, the sensor, the com computer, to, to respond to those energy patterns and identify what are the stress patterns, what are the, the remedies that balance those stress patterns in real time. You know, in, in, in looking at the remote viewing research that's out there, they, they actually found that when the remote viewing was accurate in, in the government research, that they could actually measure an energetic effect at the site being viewed. Now this could be thousands of miles, it could be across the world in another, another whole other uh, continent. Uh, and so that, that makes sense out of the observations that, that many clients have had over the years where uh, we find out after the fact that at the exact time that we were doing the testing was when they experienced some change in their health. So the testing is a healing process in itself. Even if you never uh, implemented the recommendations, which of course we recommend because then you have healing over time as well and healing with the actual chemistry that's identified that matches what your body is looking for, that carries the energy that your body's looking for. You know, ultimately material substance is energetic. Uh, in nature. And, and even beneath that energy, the, the deeper we go into matter, we see it's all space, it's all energy fields, and ultimately the quantum physicists say it's all, it, it's all information, it's all consciousness. Uh, and, and that's really what we see in the, in the healing process. So we're tapping into your body, mind, spirit, not just your, your conscious awareness, not just the, the, the chemistry of the body, you know, in a sense, the chemistry of the body is a fossil of the energy. And the energy is, is a response to the, the, the spirit. When you, when you change your mind about where you're headed in your life, immediately your, your physiology changes. When you, when you think, uh, for example, if you think about serving a uh, tennis serve, if we had EMG, electromyographs, uh, recording your muscles of the arm, even though you didn't think you moved your arm, you just visualized serving that tennis ball, we'd be able to tell you exactly when you thought that because the muscles would show a response. The brain would show a response and, and it reflects in the body. So that's the subtle level that we're working on and working on all, really all three of those layers, the physical material substance of the body with things like herbs and nutritional supplements, the body's made of those and it, sometimes it really needs the material substance. If you're really out of balance, uh, you know, for, for a while, the body needs some of those material remedies. We're going to be able to identify that. When it's the energy flow that's, that's, that's maybe stuck, uh, something like a homeopathic remedy might just be the signal, the informational energetic signal that that's needed to turn on certain pathways. That's the whole concept of homeopathy, of, of stimulating parallel pathways that ha will converge and have an effect on the, the issue at hand by using more of the resources available to your body uh, where, when it's stuck in that sort of uh, overly focused mode of it's trying to, you know, trying to move that immovable object. You need to recruit more help. 
and, and getting the body, our whole concept is to get the whole body, mind, spirit complex in a more coherent state. So we look at the big picture, you know, we can always get into more details. For example, testing in person, there's 800 acupuncture points in the body that can be tested. That, that would take days to, to accomplish. And we'd certainly find more and more specific uh, inputs, remedies that could help stimulate and create balance. But what we find is in most cases, uh, you know, as an eye doctor working with, with eye diseases, in most cases, uh, I didn't even need to, to get into testing the specific eye points, which are around the orbit, bony orbit of the eye, for different parts of the eye, if we would balance all the main circuits of the body as a whole. Because eyes don't get sick or get well on their own. They need circulation to bring nutrients and take away the waste. They need uh, lymphatic drainage. They need uh, nerve function, certainly, for vision. They need digestive function to extract those nutrients and absorb and, and bring them into the bloodstream. Uh, you need immune function to be balanced, not creating inf too much inflammation, chronic inflammation that's out of control, it does damage, but to be able to produce enough of an inflammatory acid state to, to dissolve toxins and waste that are deposited and flush them out of the system. Uh, and we need certainly immunity to protect against uh, various uh, invasion by other biological organisms. But the issue with other organisms in our body is, has been really misunderstood since the time of Pasteur. Pasteur and Bichamp had a, 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 you know, the ongoing uh, debate about is it, is it the organism, you know, the bacteria that causes the infection, or is it the terrain that supplies the conditions for the bacterium to grow? Well, they're, they're both perspectives. And, and, and in the conventional medical scientific field, <clears throat> Pasteur won, and, and only in the last year have we heard that the, the, from the Centers for Disease Control that official announcement that the antibiotic age is over, it's at an end. Because it's a, it's a perspective, but it's a limited perspective to say that, as they thought when penicillin was, was developed, uh, that there'll be someday a, a, a drug for every, to cure every disease. Well, actually drugs haven't cured disease. They create a new disease. That's why we call it allopathic medicine. It's, you're taking, you know, the body is never deficient in a toxin. Uh, we can use a homeopathic potency of that toxin to remind the body that it has the toxin in order to eliminate it, but that's a non-toxic dose. It's an informational dose, really. For example, there was a study with rats exposed to arsenic. They found that the rats eliminated about one-third of the arsenic that they were exposed to, and the rest was stored in the body tissues. But with a single dose of uh, in this case, we'd call it isopathic, but homeopathically prepared arsenic, arsenic amalgam is the remedy. It's a non-toxic dose, but it's a signal. It's an informational signal. It, it's, it carries the, the characteristic waveform, just like a radio station has a certain energy pattern that would be like a, 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 a potency, a certain frequency carrier wave in homeopathy. But the, the, the signature information, like the, the, the message on that radio station, is specific to you know the broadcast the the a certain song or a certain news uh, broadcast is carrying information on that energy channel so in this case you're sending a you know playing the tune of arsenic to the body and the body's responding by saying oh there's I, i'm getting a, an arsenic signal there must be arsenic in the, in my environment there is arsenic information in my environment I have that arsenic that reminds me, I have that arsenic stored from the last time I was exposed. I better dump some of that out. And they found that half of what was stored, so another third equivalent to what was initially detoxified, there was another round of detoxification from that, that, one, uh, that one signal. So, so there's much more <laughs> going on in the process of health and disease than what we've learned in our standard conventional Western medicine. So we integrate Oriental medicine is a huge component that, that helps us answer the questions of how, is, how does this work, how is it connected. You know, there's the, the Western physiology, there's the Oriental physiology, which is more the energy flow, the energy uh, connections in the body, the meridians, and, and the, the flow of the, the five elements, very important. Uh, and, and then there's other aspects that, we're, that are related that we're learning 
about information. That uh, you know, consciousness is part of the information process, but we know that what we're conscious of is maybe represents less than one percent of all the information flow that's going on for your body to be able to function. Whether you're trying to get well or you're playing a sport or you're reading a book, there's there's a lot more going on than what you're thinking about. If you had to think for every cell to metabolize sugar, you wouldn't be able to read, you wouldn't be able to walk, you wouldn't be able to think about anything else. So there's a cellular level of consciousness. There's, as I model it, it's a, consciousness is fractal. So, so that's a mathematical term that means you have a consciousness that of you, you as an organism, you as a being, you as a sentient spirit, you have your vision, you have your hearing, you have your sense of touch, you have an internal kinesthetic sense and sense of, of emotion, emotion movement of, of energy within the body. Uh, and that's happening also at a cellular level. It comes, what you experience as a whole organism is uh, a summation, as an overview of what's happening in each cell added to each other cell. And so your consciousness, if right now I ask you to think about the big toe on your right foot, your consciousness actually goes there. And there's actually an energetic effect there, just like in the remote viewing experiments, confirmed that there is a remote energetic effect, that we're talking about an effect that's non-local in a physics sense. It's not just the effect of nerves uh, motor nerves going to muscles of your leg and your foot and that move wiggle the toes there that's happening too it's happening on all these levels at once but right now we're speaking about what is the effect of you now thinking about your right big toe can you feel the difference in sensory awareness right you're aware of that part of your body now and now if i tell you to stop being aware of it that's harder isn't it You've brought energy there, you've had an impact, and that energy has an effect over time. There's a memory effect. And so when we bring energy, whether it's at a conscious level, which we work with, or also at a cellular level, at a, at a subconscious level and an unconscious cellular level, all of these aspects, the other 99% of the information processes going on in your body can also now be optimized. And that's crucial for healing. You know, with the best intention, the best you know, positive thinking, the best visualization of healing, there's still going to be all kinds of blockages, energetic, informational, and material blockages that you can be up against in trying to heal something, to heal, essentially to finish an unfinished healing process from some past injury, damage, trauma, toxin exposure, uh, acute stress, whatever that that uh, that impact was that if it wasn't healed in real time we accumulate those layers of damage and distress and in the healing process we're reversing that time sequence we're going back layer by layer or you are going back layer by layer and your body mind and spirit at a conscious subconscious and unconscious energetic biological level is just constantly addressing this you're always healing but how can you heal faster if we find if you can get all of your body systems as represented in the 40 different meridians that we measure in German electroacupuncture, if we get all of those 40 uh, Birkeland currents, I think of them as in physics, plasma physics terms, these circuits of energy, if we get them all working on the same circuit board rather than, uh, you know, on the same circuit rather, rather than, you know, they're on, they're all, on your body circuit board, but are they work? Are they wired together? Are they working together as a team, or is you know, the liver? The liver maybe is busy working on toxins from the colon, and so it's not able to really function as far as being the electrical polarity to your brain. Uh, so then that throws your brain off electrically, which means you can't. You have some brain fog, and you can't remember as clearly, and you can't think straight, and maybe you feel frustrated or angry. So. To, to understand the dynamics of what's happening happening in a situation like that uh, on a modeling level, I've had to produce this new model, which incorporates the oriental medicine and the Western physiology and the cutting edge science and physics so that we can 
when we do bring that all together, it all makes sense. In the last couple of years, as I've been really refining this model, I have yet to run into a question as questions come up that, that, that doesn't fall in line with the model. It doesn't, when I look at the research that's out there, the, the, the results of that research just fully support what the model would propose. So we're able to actually have a predictive model. It, it, for example, the latest, latest finding, my finding, in looking at research with a question in, in the model was, is there evidence of vision having an effect at a distance, at the target, at the object of regard? When I look at something in my line of sight or in my mind's eye, when I look at some remote, some remote uh, target, is there evidence that my process of vision has an effect at the image we're talking in real space, not just, you know, the, the modern view, the modern bio, biological view, psychological view that's taught in school is that all of that is happening inside your skull, that the, that the skull is beyond the sky, that your vision is happening in your visual cortex, and somehow perceptually we create the illusion that it's out there in space. And what I'm saying is no, that's actually not true. That biologically, yes, there's an image being formed, an electromagnetic image being formed in the visual cortex, but then it's actually projected through the spirit body, which is a non -local, has non-local functionality. The minerals that make up the spirit body are only, uh, typically, typical function is that they're five-ninths local. Five-ninths of the mass is here now in, in your body field, wherever your consciousness is. When you thought about your big toe, you're sending more of those, the presence of those to the toe or the, the bilocation of the minerals in the brain that relate to the toe are activating their connection to that point in space. You're actually imaging your thoughts into that space. Um, and so the, the evidence is when you see that remote uh, image, if you're thinking about a, a loved one who's far away, who needs healing, and you're praying for them, and you're imagining, you're seeing their body heal, you're visualizing the healing, you're picturing their body in perfect radiant health, you are actually having a physical effect that's been measured at that, at that distant location. You're, you're affecting their body on a, on a level of the physics. You're having a quantum effect, quantum healing. And, and one quantum is enough to trigger a cascade where when the body responds to that one quantum it affects the orientation the uh, the physics of the entire body because we're constantly responding to our energetic environment 